All right, welcome to the third part of the Advanced Tyvas Material Overview. So far, I explained you how to use the exposed parameters to control the shader, and I showed you how you can reuse PBR textures to turn a standard PBR asset into a stylized one. And now, I'm gonna show you a couple of techniques I use to gain even more control and add extra details to my materials. So let's get started. For this demo, I will be using assets from the Stylize Pack, which you can grab from the Unreal Marketplace if you want to follow along, but honestly, any asset will do. If you've been a game dev or 3D artist for a while, you've probably heard of Ambient Occlusion, or AO for short. It's basically a technique to create soft shadows that naturally show up in corners, crevices or where objects meet when there is no indirect light. It's usually a pre-baked black and white texture for the artist's need for the workflow and we're gonna use it too for our stylized materials. Like it's a gradient map or to mask out procedural effects such as rim light. And luckily, you don't even need to leave the editor to bake AO maps anymore. Epic added that awesome little feature in the newer versions of Unreal. Just switch over to modeling mode, scroll down and there is the baking tool. Just make sure the object you want to bake the AO map for is selected. But wait a second, does that mean you need texture coordinates now? Well, technically, yeah, but you can now generate UVs automatically using the, you guessed that, Auto UV tool. I know it's not perfect, but it does a really solid job and saves you a ton of time, especially with trick geometry like this grape set. Alright, so let me show you how I do it. Okay, first you're gonna need to pick the ambient occlusion output type and the preview should switch automatically to AO as well. And I like to change the viewport mode to unlit to better see what's going on. And for the settings, the defaults work pretty good for most cases, but we can increase the resolution of the output and maybe samples per pixel to get, you know, a smoother result. However, setting this above 16 will not make a huge difference and only impacts the bake time, so let's leave it 4 for now. Then occlusion rays, the same thing, 32 works well. Now adjusting the spread angle changes the shadow fall off, and usually I set this around 140, 150 to get a nice balance between a sharp and a smooth bake. And then you just hit accept. The texture is saved to a folder where the target mesh is. I immediately rename it so it has a proper name. So I, I get a new material instance and now let me show you a couple of ways you can use that AO map. Theoretically you can load it here as a color map and tint it, giving you that simple and clean look. Of course I can tweak the texture a bit like adjusting the uh, brightness curve to make it a little darker or brighter. But actually, using this texture as a gradient map might be an even better idea. So let's try that. I'll just disable the color map to bring back the gradients. And now, when I load the texture, I can switch the preview gradient mode. So what we can see now is basically the same AO we baked earlier, but this way, I can get more precise and non-destructive control. I can play around with contrast, uh, tweak the intensity or even flip the map entirely. And the gradient map works just like the procedural one, blending color A and B from black to white, so yeah, it's basically a simple linear interpolation between those two colors. And what I really like about this feature is that I can enable color banding to give it a more cell shaded look. Uh, you know what, let's maybe turn off the fake directional light for now. Uh, additionally, those transitions are sharp now, so even with a lower resolution map, it still looks okay, no pixelation. Okay, so there is another way to use this map as a detail layer. Just make sure to enable Use Object UVs, otherwise it'll use that default triplanar mapping and you don't want that since the texture was baked with the Object UVs. 
Now I can pick a custom color and adjust the intensity or contrast however I want. You might be thinking, what's the difference between this and the gradient map? Well, technically they are pretty similar, but this gives you even more control and avoids some artistic, you know, limitations. Like if you are using a full color map on your object, you can't use a gradient map at the same time. I explained this in the previous video. Or maybe you have another map like a curvature bake or some custom gradient mask that you want to layer with an AO bake. Alright, so far I've shown you how you can use these textures to affect color. But they are also really useful for something else. Masking procedural effects. Let me grab another fruit to explain it is better. As we know, effects like fake reflection, directional light or rim light all rely on the object's shape. Take this raspberry for example, it's missing a bit of depth in my opinion. But luckily, we can fix that really quick with a little AO map. Same workflow, just go ahead, use the auto UV tool and bake out the ambient occlusion. And here I'm using the same material instance with the same settings, but this time I've applied a texture to mask out all the effects. See how much more depth we are getting now? And for the material setup, it's simple. Each effect has a used mask toggle, and once enabled, it lets you choose a texture. Of course, it doesn't always have to be a generated mask. You can create one manually too. But for this, let me show you another example. This toy car was converted to a stylized version, so it already has UVs and its original albedo map. And here, I'm using a strong fake reflection on the paint layer, but I didn't like how it looked on the tires or on the bottom of the car. So to tweak this, I created a simple black and white mask based on the object's UVs. So what I did is I exported the mesh to Blender, I selected all the faces where I wanted to reduce the effect and saved the UV template of that selection. Then I used it as a guide to fill in gray scale colors. Think of it as a multiplication factor where white means the full effect is applied, black means it's completely turned off and gray gives you something in between. Alright everyone, that pretty much wraps up this overview. I really hope I explained the shader clearly and maybe even inspired you to create your own stylized assets. Anyway, you can grab the advanced stylized material on the Unreal Engine Marketplace or soon on Fab. Thanks for watching. Psst, hey, and a little sneak peek for the next update. I'll be adding a fake shadow feature based on the distance field that you can control per actor using primitive data. So, stay tuned.